welcome to Savage Sounds week 43. Before we get into it, um, first things first, I have a new single coming out in a month, uh, just under four weeks time. It's called Ragdoll and you can now officially pre-save it. Um, I'll put the link in the description, uh, the link in the bio and pin the tweet. I'll put it everywhere. Um, it would mean so much to me if you could pre-save it. It means that it automatically goes to your Spotify library when it comes out, which really helps me when it spikes the algorithm and you know all that jizz and jazz that would be super super duper great so this week i'm gonna be doing something a little bit different mainly because i'm running out of sounds um and secondly because i just thought it would be fun um to switch it up a little bit so i am asking lots of beatboxers to collaborate with me and teach me a sound it can be their signature sound or just a cool sound that they do so as well as you guys learning a new sound hopefully i can learn a new sound and you can watch me trying to figure out how to learn a new sound um which i think is quite fun so the beatbox that i have for you today is Da, 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 da. Hobbit, beatbox Hobbit. Uh, he is from the UK. He's a well-known beatboxer. He's been around for a while. Uh, he's like one of the more well-known sort of middle school beatboxers in 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 the country. And he helps run the UK Beatbox Championships. He's a really nice guy. Uh, he's also super super organised. I know that's a weird thing to say um, to big up a beatboxer about. But, and I might put, be putting my foot in it here, but there are a lot of beatboxers that just aren't that on top of their shish, their ish. Um, they don't turn up to rehearsals or they don't turn up to shows or gigs or they're just late or they're unreliable. There's a lot of beatboxers out there that are like that. But Hobbit, hands down, is one of the most professional, organised, got his stuff together beatboxer. If I ever have a gig that I can't do and someone says, can you recommend another beatboxer? I'll most likely go to Hobbit. In fact, I have in the past, because um, he's just he's just on top of it. And I know that sounds like a silly thing, but if you're on top of your stuff and you're decent and, and good and you turn up and you do your work and you have a good work ethic, you're going to go much further as a beatboxer, even if you're not the most talented beatboxer in the world. Like That stuff really, really counts. Um, anyway, I just want to big up Hobbit for his work ethic and being a really super nice guy. So... Here is Hobbit. He's going to introduce himself and he's going to teach uh, me and you his sound. I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. Yo, yo, what's going on? It's Hobbit here. Um, and I've been invited by the amazing Grace Savage to uh, share my one of my special sounds and teach you one of my special sounds for the uh, Savage Sounds Sessions. I don't know why I put so many S's in that, but it felt like the right thing to do. So uh, today I'm going to show you um, my bass that I do, which is a, a vocal bass that I'm well known for, um, also known as the Starsky bass. There's another beatboxer who does it. There's only a few of us that do it. Um, and it's also other beatboxers do it, like Alex Zinho does a higher pitch one. Um, and it, you can get different tones with it basically. So um, I'm gonna show you what it sounds like first and then um, give you a breakdown of how I do it. So. Okay. I'm just gonna have a go at that before he even gets into the nitty gritty of it. Um, just from listening, I'm gonna try and have a go. Okay, doesn't quite sound like it, but I think I'm maybe close-ish. Um, let's see how we do this sound. There you go. So. The way I do this bass is a combination of a few uh, few different techniques. The first technique is um, it's basically gargling. So you're, you're gargling using your uvula, which is the thing uh, uh, that dangles in the back of your mouth, which is called the uvula. Sorry for any uh, in-depth mouse, 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 mouse views here, but it's the best way to explain it. You're basically vibrating that. So when you gargle, <laughs> after you've um, brushed your teeth or whatever. Um, that's essentially the sound that you're using. Okay, this is good news because I can't roll my R's. I can do it for a second and then it just stops. So instead, I've always used my uvula, uvula. I've been able to do it since I was like seven years old. But 
I've never thought to use it for bass. So potentially this could be a cool new bass sound for me. Hmm. But you're refining it a bit more and adding a vocal note behind it. And this vocal note can be high pitch or low pitch. So if you do a high pitch one, if you do a low, um, and I'm going to break it down of how I do it. So when you're gargling, you you're, you tend to put a bit more pressure on your and you really you kind of strain your, your throat a bit, but that's because you're trying to gargle the water or whatever out. But for this bass, you want to loosen it a bit more and become a bit more relaxed. Um, and to do this, you just don't put too much pressure on it, basically. So it becomes and you feel what a common term in the beatbox scene is the sweet spot. So the sweet spot is when you feel the vibration hit. And so you're not uh, you're not trying too hard, basically. Um, and I'll show you. This is really weird. This is the first time I've done. I've, I've actually seen this in my many years of beatboxing. But you can see where my where the uvula starts to vibrate, and you'll see it start flapping around um, like <laughs> like a fish out of water, basically. So. <laughs> And that's where the tone's coming from, the the, the bass. It's the vibration of that. <laughs> okay. Well, that is gross, but great. Uh, and I'm going to, I want to see if you can, you guys can see my little flappy uvula if I do that. Okay. Doing the high pitched one or maybe a mid pitched one. Okay. We're going in. We're going in. Ah, there she is. Oh, no, because my tongue gets in the way. I think uh, maybe I have a too fat a tongue for you guys to see it. It's definitely vibrating, but for some reason my tongue gets in the way. Okay, moving on. Um, <clears throat> and you can, as I said before, you can change the pitch. Um, and my vocal range is not so so low, um, but it's dependent on yours. You can either do it high or low. So my 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 lowest vocal note that I can hit is more. And if I add that with the gargle, and to get that, I'm kind of pushing my, my tongue back to create the vibrations here. And it creates that tone. Okay, my lowest note is... That's probably my lowest note. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about kind of finding that that little sweet spot in the in the vibration. But once you've got it, you can really play with the tones in it. And the the nice thing about it is because you're using your vocal range, you can really um enunciate it like essentially like a synth would so um, and then changing your mouth shape with it creates a completely different tone so if I really close my mouth and have a small gap coming out of my mouth you'll hear but if I open it wide it's a bit more kind of wet and a different tone to it but you can play with that where um changing the shape so for example and you get kind of a really cool sound from it ah oh, i feel like it's so close i can feel it underneath happening but I can feel like it's too spitty, maybe on top, too crispy. Oh my god, I feel a bit sick. That was it. Oh, it feels it's the sweet spot you definitely it is the sweet spot you get the sweet spot and it feels great 
Um, and again, changing the pitch, you can get completely different sounds as well. So if I play around with the pitch of my voice, but keeping the technique the same, you can get. And you can really find some cool, unique sounds from it. And again, you can go really high pitch and then create a completely different, almost dubstepy, synthy kind of sound. So it changes from the wow wow to the last little technique this is a special little trick for anyone who can get it i mainly can do it because i have a wondrous gap in my two front teeth um which i can kind of whistle and create a high-pitched tone out of which is but you can do it without having this gap. MC Zany can do it. Um, and there's a few other beatboxers that can do it. But the cool thing about it is with the bass, you can add the and you get a really cool, weird, high pitch filter on a uh, on the bass. So it changes it from wow, wow to Oh my God, sick. That sounds like a lightsaber. Saber? Saver. Is it a saber? I don't know anything about Star Wars. Sounds like one of them. <laughs> nah, um, I can't do that one. I used to have a gap in my teeth. When I was younger, I had a gap in my front teeth that I could fit a pound coin between. So maybe back in the day, I would have been able to do it. But my teeth are too beautiful now. I hope that helps. I hope you've got it, Grace. Good luck with trying this. Remember, stay relaxed, focus, find that sweet spot, play around with the tones, and you'll get some... Lovely little bass lines like Yes, big up Hobbit. You can follow him on Instagram at Beatbox Hobbit. He's great. He's great. And also, he is the most organised beatboxer because how many beatboxers did I contact and how many said that they were going to get back to me and who was the first one? Obviously Hobbit. Because he's just on top of his shiz, as I keep saying. Um... I also realised that I've asked him to film in vertical mode because I thought we were going to do split screen, but I actually don't think that's going to work. So the following videos are going to be all landscape. Um, so you're just going to have to deal with slimline vertical Hobbit for this Savage Sounds. Uh, see you next week. That's it. Go pre-save my single. Peace out.